A unit circle is a circle centered on the origin with radius 1. We don't specify units of measure because in trig they'll always cancel out when we take ratios, so we just say the radius is 1 or 1 unit. In the last video, we created an imaginary right triangle for an acute angle theta by choosing an arbitrary point on its terminal side. Now we're going to choose the point where the terminal side intersects the unit circle, and we'll drop our vertical red line from this point. This gives us a right triangle with side lengths we'll call opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Since the radius of the circle is 1, the length of the hypotenuse is 1. Let's see what this does to our trig ratios. So Katoa reminds us that sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Substituting 1 for the hypotenuse we get, for unit circles, the sine of theta corresponds to the length of the opposite side, and cosine theta corresponds to the length of the adjacent side. So we can label our triangle like this. And this tells us that the x and y coordinates of theta's point on a unit circle are cosine theta and sine theta, respectively. We can read an angle's cosine and sine directly from the unit circle. This is an extremely important observation and essential to understand. The cosine and sine of theta are the x and y coordinates of theta's point on a unit circle. This method works for all angles. We cannot construct a right triangle with an obtuse angle, but when using the points on a unit circle, we don't need a triangle at all. So I'll begin referring to the trig ratios as trig functions, because we can now consider them functions of any angle, not just the ratios for right triangles in quadrant 1. And sometimes the trigonometric functions are called circular functions for this very reason. Triangles are great for Sokotoa and learning what the trig function means, but you don't really need a triangle at all. You just need a circle. This is a good time to point out, you must know that for standard position angles, cosine corresponds to x and sine corresponds to y. This memory aid might help. x comes before y alphabetically, and cosine comes before sine alphabetically. That's how I remembered that x was cosine and y was sine. Also, adjacent comes before opposite, horizontal comes before vertical, and even blue comes before red. There are lots of alphabetical memory aids here. We'll talk more about these function behaviors when we graph them in later videos, but I want to draw your attention to these details. The values for cosine and sine are constrained by the coordinate values of the unit circle. They will never be greater than 1 or less than negative 1. Naturally, the cosine and sine have the same positive-negative signs as points in their respective quadrants. Here are the color-coded positive-negative signs for the cosine and sine of angles in each quadrant. Cosine blue, sine red. The quadrantal angles between the quadrants have cosine and sine as shown by their coordinates. This is not material to memorize, but rather understand by seeing the picture in your head. Let's consider the tangent function. Sokotoa tells us sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, but a point on a unit circle tells us only cosine and sine of its angle by the x and y coordinates. So how do we interpret the tangent function based on a point on a unit circle? Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Let's rewrite the sine ratio to isolate opposite. Opposite equals sine times hypotenuse. Similarly, adjacent equals cosine times hypotenuse. Since tangent equals opposite over adjacent, and we have terms right here for opposite and adjacent, let's substitute them in to get tangent equals sine times hypotenuse divided by cosine times hypotenuse. Cancel the hypotenuse and we get tangent equals sine over cosine, which is the general definition of tangent. Please add this to your short list of things to memorize. Tangent equals sine over cosine. A function that equals a fraction is undefined when the fraction's denominator is zero. So the tangent is undefined where the cosine is zero, which is all angles at the top and bottom of the unit circle. The cotangent, being the reciprocal of tangent, is undefined when the sine is zero, which is all angles at the left and right edge of the unit circle. 
We'll graph the trig functions in later videos, and you'll see these characteristics more clearly. But I just wanted to point out that some trig functions are discontinuous and undefined at certain angles. The unit circle model gives us an opportunity to see the most fundamental identity in trigonometry. An identity is an equation that's always true. We'll talk about trig identities later in video TR-32, but since the most important one is right here in front of us, we may as well dive in. We just apply the Pythagorean theorem to this triangle. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. The terms look a little strange. When we square a trig function, we put the exponent, or index, 2 between the function name and the angle argument, and we say squared in between them too. Sine squared theta means sine theta times sine theta, and sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 is the Pythagorean identity for obvious reasons. This is the most famous and fundamental equation in trigonometry. It doesn't matter what angle you choose, this equation will always be true. It can be written different ways, they all say the same thing. There's a TR-14X video with some questions and problems. In the next video, TR-15, we'll cover the values of sine and cosine for the common angles.